Okay, today uh, I want to look at fundamentals. Um, so I'm going to break this video down into a few different areas. Uh, first we'll look at my camera systems. I sort of have a range of things that I work with and I think it's really important at least from my perspective that you understand that uh, that no matter what format you're working with um, if you can find something in that format that you really um, are excited by or, or, or really like that you sort of go hunting for that and 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 that's part of photography so we're gonna look at my camera systems um, and then we can talk about um, I think just a basic lighting um, understanding could be quite good not you know we're not going to talk go in and talk about studio lighting like using soft boxes or anything like that um, that's all part of it definitely but when I mean fundamentals especially for lighting it's more about um, situational awareness uh, so we're just going to look in, in this little studio homemade studio housemade studio that I've got and talk about the light and see how just with maybe a few different uh, shifts a few different fundamental changes you can achieve really quite different results which is exciting for those of you with limited space okay awesome so I'm excited obviously um, so we'll start with camera systems Fundamentals. Camera system. So I've got my camera systems here. We're going to walk through and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them and then what I like about them and how I use them. So Mamiya RZ. Oh, push in. I'll have a, you'll see it in a sec. So this is a digital, um, a digital version of this camera system. Uh, the first part was made in sort of the early 80s in Japan. And then phase one, uh, a company out of Copenhagen produces the backs. So this is my main working camera. How it's always been explained to me the best was, I'll do a, a, a you'll see, I'll, I'll put the camera in there to show you what I mean. A great way to look at the RZ is to imagine that you're looking at the magazine page itself. That's always been the best way to understand why this is good. So what I always do in the most cases, because this camera is really heavy, um, you don't want to be running around with it. You know, uh, I see people do that, and that's. I mean, I, I'm not strong enough to do that. It's always on a tripod. So this is always something that stays stationary, and people interact with me and the camera. Um, they do all the work, I suppose, which is a great way to do it. Um, I'm going to show you the viewfinder here I can just do it on my phone and um, pop it in but it's a really beautiful format in that um, we're doing so as you can sort of see there you see me on screen so it is very much uh, I'll leave this running is that gonna work no how am I gonna do this I need another C stand There you know. And then that's sort of the view as is. And then focus. And go down. And it's a split screen, so it'll the the circle will become complete when you're sharp. And that's it. Boom. So why I love this system is that the way I work is I build up the shoot in a lot of pre-production. You know, you do a lot of work beforehand. You get everything set up. You get all the model looking good or the subject or whatever. The light's looking good. And then um, you put the camera system in and you get to really play with concepts a lot more, I find, with this. So that's the RZ. 
pretty awesome. It's not for everybody, it's very heavy, it can be very expensive, but you know, say la vie. Um, Fuji, I've got a little XT, X, what is it, X100. This is quite fun, it's, it's a, quite a wide format. So, oh, I'll have to edit back with the, a picture. Um, I've got a picture up now of, uh, for an editorial I did. You know, it's a, it's a very specific camera. It's not my favorite camera, um, but it's as far as having a little sort of Leica-esque, quiet camera to have when you're on the street, it's really good. That's probably what it is. It's just, instead of spending however many thousands on a Leica, this camera does a pretty good job. Um, and then, I also really love um, Nikon S33s. Uh, they're really, they're just a waterproof camera, um, like a kid's toy really. I just will show you what I took then. The flash on it, I only ever use it with the flash, but for as far as, um, it's waterproof. So also I'll throw up on the screen, this is a shot I did for, w, uh, for V Magazine uh, last, last year. And Daphne was squirting the camera and I wouldn't get my other cameras wet, so this was a great option. And with the flash, it does have that level of contrast that across all my formats I keep a certain amount of contrast through the images um, and with flash with this I'm able to get that and you're able to you know you're able to you're able to do things that you couldn't ordinarily do with a normal camera this is kind of the workhorse I suppose for a lot of commercial fashion clients um, or just images that need a lot of movement um, this is the Nikon D810, there's a D850 out now. They're all kind of the same stuff, I think, as far as DSLRs. Um, they're as much, I mean, they're awesome at the high ISOs, which is really good for me. They become quite filmic, you know, so you could shoot something at, I think it's 16,000 ISO. Um, and then if you work on the light or the narrative, it, it, it's, it's another look, I suppose, which is, which is really awesome. Um, but this camera really is, for me, the shot up I've got up is, um, I did this for my book, uh, Five Rockaways, and it was a thunderstorm, and you got to get the shot, you know, um, and this is where this camera is so perfect. You put it onto autofocus, you just spray and pray, you know, and, and that's how some shots you get, and, and that's the, that's kind of, I suppose, the, the the main point about all these camera systems is that um, you, if you use them correctly, you'll get something great. You know, it's not about having the most expensive thing. It's not about, you know, most of the stuff is just gimmicks. It's what you can extract from those moments, how you use the technology. I mean, I'm a digital photographer. I'm not, I've never shot film. Um, so for me, this type of stuff is really interesting. Um, and then also, you know, you can go into a whole new world of with filters, you know, low-con filters, pro-mist filters, all these things that develop the narrative. Um, and yeah, we can talk, we'll talk about that after, actually. We can talk about that quickly. Um, so next is just lighting. We're going to look at some lighting. Um, so, lighting. Lighting is a long conversation. Um, a basic idea of lighting is... You're never going to cheat yourself. So whatever you like, whatever your aesthetic is, you will always be drawn to something like that. So you'll always do the lighting a certain way. How I think would be a good way to think about lighting is, I mean, for me, it's a continual, um, a continual experimentation with, with, with smaller details, I suppose, you know. Um, how I want to explain it today is more, there's global lighting and local lighting. So for, for the situation right now, uh, you'll see on these two photos, I've got blacks each side, which brings in the contrast around my jaw and underneath my chin. There's a small white bounce um, underneath my chin, underneath my eye line really, just to give a bit of a lift. 
show you. That's with the white. And without. With? No, without, without. This is without. And then with. Um, these are small, easy things to accomplish, but the more you know about how you like to shape light, the better. So, very simple. This is a daylight. You'll see at the top as well in the picture, there's a, there's a large skylight about halfway open. And there's also a little hot light, a um, tungsten light tucked into the corner just to give a bit of direction and warm up the, the color temperature overall. And that's a, like the way I'm lighting this is, a, this is really the way I light a lot of my work. Um, I work in a, in a very global way of lighting, meaning you try and light as much, uh, much of an area as possible so your area of play in the light is a lot greater. Christopher Ferguson is sort of a bit of a living legend, I think, in the, in the DP, Director of Photography world. He did in the Mood for Love, in the Color of Love, Mood for Love. Google it. I don't can't remember. Um, but if you want to see sort of interesting light and, and what you can do in situations that may be a bit more common with your with what your you know the area of play that you're trying to do, whether it's a bedroom or a you know whatever you're trying to light, look at his work. I heard one story. I mean, there's a lot of stories going around about a lot of things, but he um, he was quite known for being very irrational and hard to work with because of his creativity you know he would i mean again this is just a story i've heard but he was he'd do things like you know you'd build a huge set you know you'd have 20k lights everywhere you know thousands of dollars and then you just turn everything off and light it with a cigarette lighter to that extent the point is that if you're i think if you're willing to destroy the lighting that you think might be the right choice. I think if you're ready to, if you can understand how to change it dramatically or, or do something like that, I think there's, there's a, that's where the sweet spot is for me. So what I'm gonna do as well, just to show you something very, just very easy about a situation, is that we'll have a look at the light coming through the other side of this canvas that I've painted. I didn't paint it, but on the other side of this, just to see a completely different scenario with the lighting, um, where it's just you know, front lit, back lit, essentially, which is which is really the the good shifts that you want to do. You know, you want something to, to when you look at us when you're trying to paint a picture when you're trying to do something. If you can um, if you can give yourself more visual stimulation, you know, if you can if you've got more things to react to, I think that helps the creative process dramatically in that, you know, and people react to things, and if you can keep that moving, anyway, let's have a look at the other side. All right, so this is the other side of life, the other side of the uh, thing, so it's quite beautiful, you know. I think the other side is really pretty as well, but just to, just to sort of see that, you know, if you've got a nice curtain, you know, the difference between shooting someone outside in the hard sun, going inside, and then seeing them backlit, these things that you should be constantly thinking of, now as we talk, or as I talk, I'm going to try and add a little bit of light in just so we have something a bit more, um, a bit easier to work with. side of the canvas so we uh, it was backlit when it starts and from this point I've just added a bit of tungsten to give a bit of side light um, it's just that tungsten light that you saw previously pointed up into the ceiling there just to give the board a bit of 45 degree tungsten light so this is a lot more narrative um, a lot more story this light a lot moodier you know if you want them more front lit and you're limited with your crew members you just get the person to twist, you know, if they're becoming too dark, you know, this is the, the point about lighting is getting the direction right of the camera and the lighting. 
So you're in this situation just to see a, a different thing. And if it becomes too dark, you just face the person into the light. You can bring the camera around here, see them a bit more frontly. Um, you know, then if the background doesn't look right, you twist the background and that's the shot, you know. It's, it's really about workshopping through your own mind what you like, being drawn to what you like. And if you don't like something, it's not going to, I think it will rarely change um, if you don't change the light first. You can get the model talent bouncing about or the still life or whatever you're shooting to, to try and work within this bad light and it just, it, I don't think you will ever get what you really want. So the point is really to focus first when you set up the camera, first when you're looking at a situation, just look at the light and, and like I say, be drawn to, you know, definitely go with your gut on this thing because like I said, you can't really cheat your own personal aesthetic so it's really about focusing on seeing things you like, and if you don't like something, you try and change it or you try and get rid of it. That's it. Hi guys, so that's it. That's, the, that's, that's sort of a basic look at photography um, from my perspective. Uh, with regards to camera systems, it's really going out there and what the system that you have, um, trying to find what is the successful, what you, how you best how you extract the best things out of that camera system and try and repeat that and repeat that and, and, and make that sort of a fluent thing with your visual language. And then you can move on to other aspects like lighting and, and, and location and makeup or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, and then with regards to lighting, it would be about seeing the situation two different ways. I believe firmly that any location or studio, any, any situation with photography, the biggest strength that you have is trying to see something completely different from where you've been. Digital photography is free. I mean, if you're shooting film out there, it's only another role, it's only another picture, but don't sell yourself short with time to, to not try something out of your comfort zone. Um, as that's important as well. You'd be surprised how many successful images come from pure mistakes. Um, yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna be putting some more stuff on, some more videos on SES Worldwide, the YouTube channel, as well as it'll be on your Instagram, school's Instagram feed. Um, yeah, check it out. Um, I'll be doing another video after this on uh, what to do when there's nothing to do. Go out there and keep clicking.